Hello, this is Gary Lambert from Beekmantown Central School District, and today I'm going to be discussing extended remote instruction using Google Meet. I'll be providing you with three use case scenarios and how to's to make sure that you understand how to make use of Google Meet for those use case scenarios. So the first use case scenario would be starting a Google Meet video chat, which is interactive with your students. In this type of scenario, your students would be able to see and hear you, as well as you being able to see and hear your students. The second use case scenario would be to start a Meet live stream, which is view only, in which case you can push video live or record it out to your students without interaction. And then the last use case scenario would be using Google Meet to do a telephone call. So let's go into and show how that's done. So the first use case scenario would be using Google Meet for a video chat. If you go to meet.google.com, as a staff member, you can join or start a meeting. Students at this point can only join meetings. They cannot start them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on join or start a meeting, and we're going to give it a name. So I'll call it Tuesday meet number one. And I just learned you can't use special characters here. So we're just going to call it Tuesday meet one and continue. So now I can get ready to use this meeting right now. And I can join and I'll tell you with the, the present button, this will be available to us within uh, Google Meet also. If you just want to show your screen, you can click on present and it's not going to show you. It'll show what's on your screen. So let me just click on join now. Now, here's the information that you would need to share with your students for them to be able to join. So if I click on copy joining information, you notice that it's been copied to the clipboard, as you saw in that the alert message down in the corner. And I could go into Google Classroom and paste that link into Google Classroom for students to be able to go there. Alternatively, you could also take that link, copy that link, and go into GoGuardian Teacher and paste that link as a new tab for all students so that they were able to go directly to your Google Meet as well. So right now, I'm in the Google Meet all by myself. You know that because there's one attendee. And there's a couple of things that you can do. You can start recording the meeting, which is great. If you want to just do a long recording for your students and be able to then later post it to Google Classroom after the fact, Using Google Meet's a perfect way that you could do that. You could do that even if it is interactive, if some students are you know, possibly going to miss that particular class session. So if I click on record meeting, it's going to tell me that um, please inform all attendees that you're recording it. And if there's anybody joining by telephone, they'll actually get an audio message at the when they first joined that that meeting is being recorded and that the recording has now stopped as well when, when you do stop it. So it takes a few seconds, and you notice up in the top corner, it says recording. Now, that recording will appear automatically in your Google Drive in a folder called Meet Recordings. You can also find it under Recent Documents or Recent Items. It'll show up once it's processed that video. Now, depending on the length of your video, it may take a little longer for that video to appear. Uh, but Google's doing the work behind the scenes to encode it and getting that video ready to, um, to present. So a couple other things that you can do. If you turn on present now, you can say present an entire screen. Now I can say I want to present that screen. And now students are seeing, or any other attendee, is seeing that screen that uh, I just designated. Now you can do whatever it is you want on that screen, whether it's you uh, showing a, uh, an instruction for a math module or you doing something on your smart board. Uh, but whatever it is you're doing, they will be able to see. And you can also draw on your screen very rudimentary, simple tools, um, and then erase you know, whatever it is that you drew. You can also embed 
a webcam in the corner. Now you can do that at any time so that you can see yourself as you're doing something with the students. Now, if you turn that off, it takes the embedded webcam out. But those are some, those are some things that you can do during, um, during an interactive meeting. Now I'm going to stop presenting. I'm going to select the mouse pointer and say, stop presenting. Now, if there's other attendees in the meeting, you'll see them showing up here. If you click on it, you'll see the people that are in the meeting, but you also have the ability to click on chat. When you click on chat, you can type whatever you want and it appears. Now, students can also chat, which is probably a very helpful thing in class for you to be doing the instruction and then students will be able to uh, type a chat to you that appears up here, you'll see a number and this will this will uh, alert you that a chat is available. You can click on it. And for example, a student might put question mark that they don't, they don't understand. You'll see uh, the name of the person that had the, the question um, or the problem. And you can respond to that either via text or you can continue in the video to address that. So if you want, for whatever reason, to turn off your video and just do audio, if you click on turn off camera, it continues just doing the audio, but the video obviously is, is muted at that point. You can turn that back on and it takes a second, but the video will reappear on the camera. So that is using Google Meet for an interactive presentation. Um, let's take a look at a live stream. So I'm going to actually stop recording before I do that and it's going to be saved in my Google Drive. I'll actually show you at the end of this video how um, it'll give you a link to it, and it'll also give you a chat transcript that you can save that, um, that all, the, all the information that was shared during that chat will appear in that transcript. So I'm going to leave this Google Meet, and I'm going to show you how to create a live stream. So we're going to, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but we're going to go to calendar.google.com to start with. We'll click on create, and I'm going to call this one uh, Tuesday Meet 2. You're going to want to go underneath here under more options, and you'll add a Hangouts Meet under add conferencing. Now, I could be done right now if I just wanted to, um, to schedule a, an interactive meeting, but there's a little bit more to this. If we click add live stream, and then save there's one more very cool thing that we can do under these three dots you notice i clicked on the event under the three dots i can create a view only event now this is a live stream tuesday meet two and you'll see that it says view only so i've turned that live stream into a view only stream now i can also copy the link to that and let's go into it just so you see what that looks like Now, I am the organizer. This is what somebody who clicks on the link would see as a student or an attendee. But I'm going to go into meet.google.com. And there's Tuesday meet number two. I'm joining. And you notice that the organizer scheduled this meet to be streamed. streamed. I'm going to start streaming. Is it okay to start? Yes. Now somebody can join you while it's in progress. It takes a minute for that stream to go, but you notice that it now says that stream is live. So I am being streamed live on the internet right now. Anybody that has that link can view it, but you notice that there are no attendees besides me. You're not going to see anybody else show up. No one else will be able to chat with you, but what you can also do is record the meeting. So you are both streaming and recording at that point. So you can be streaming for those who are attending live and recording for those who can't. So that's, that's the difference between the interactive and the stream. Now, at this point, I'm going to stop recording. I'm also going to stop streaming. And I'm going to show you the last use case scenario for Google Meet. So let me go to meet.google.com. 
Now I'm going to join or start a meeting. Just going to call it phone call. Now I can join or use a phone for audio. So anybody who wants to join it, they can listen and speak. So actually, let, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it that way. Let me join. And people can dial in using that number, but I'm going to I'm going to just go in and add people to this call. Add people. I can call someone. So let's just say I'm going to call Rick in the office next door. Hey, Rick. Hey there. Hey, I'm doing a demo video right now with Google Hangout, or excuse me, with Google Meet, and I'm showing people how they can use Google Meet to just call somebody. Uh, what was the phone number, or where did it say that this call was coming from? Hangouts. Oh, it actually said it said Hangouts Meet was the caller ID. Correct. That's really cool. So. Um, staff members could use this and not have a worry that their personal number was was showing up on caller ID to the the person they were calling them. Correct. Okay, that's super cool. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate you um, helping me out. You're welcome. No Take problem. care. Bye. Okay, so that's the third use case scenario for um, Google Meet. Um, I did have a staff member say, hey, can we use Google Meet to take attendance? If you are using it in interactive mode and people are joining, you'll be able to see who's there. So if you want, you could also have students check in with you and uh, in the chat and say here, 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 and I'll show you the transcript. I'm actually going to pull that up right now. This is, a, this is a transcript from an earlier recording. So uh, let me pull this over here. It says, Sorry, let me pull this over. Recording and chat transcript are available. So if I click on this, this is actually going to be the link to the recording, and I can click on the sharing settings. I'll do that in a second. But I can click on chat transcript. And what it does is it says who the attendee was, and that's going to be their display name based on the, the name of their account. And this is what I typed, which is really kind of cool. So let me go back and click on the actual video itself, you'll see that it shows up here right in Google Drive. Uh, you see at the top, there's Google Drive, there's the file name. But I can share this. And this is the important part if you want to share this with all of your students, is right now it's private. It can only be accessed by me. I can say anyone with the link. And then that way, I can copy that link and paste that recording into uh, Google Classroom or wherever else I need students to see it. So in a nutshell, those are our three use case scenarios. I appreciate you watching the video. If you have any other questions after you watch this video, something that wasn't um, maybe clear enough, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, if you're at Beekman Town Central School District, you have my email address and I'll be happy to help you out as well as the rest of us in our department. Thanks and good luck, you guys got this.